Mij John Fundy, a touring political figure for more than three decades, founder of the Social Democratic Front SDF, dies in Yaoundé Monday after battling health issues. Many describe the political titan's demise as a great loss that marks the end of an era in the country's political history. The life, works, and legacy of the Democratic Baoba in the 7.30 edition. And that's the lone headline. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 7.30 News. Cameroon's main opposition leader, John Fundy, who is known to have played a pivotal role in the advent of the opposition party in 1990, is no more. John Fundy gave up the ghost at 11 p.m. Monday, June 12, as confirmed by a communique signed early this morning by the SDF party first vice national chairman, Joshua Ose. Ni John Fundy played a key role in Cameroon's democratization process, anchoring his drive on his famous mantra, Power to the People. The people, SDF bigwigs, members of government turned up at his residence in Yaoundé to condole with the family today, as Beatrice Losamba tells us. Morning could be heard from the Nkofulu residence of one of Cameroon's most influential opposition leaders at dawn, Tuesday, June 13. Death had just struck. Nijan Frundi had given up the goat in the wee hours at 11.30 p.m., according to family sources. He died in calm, surrounded by his family, deeply crushed. Late last night into the early hours of this morning, we had to say our goodbyes to our father, our leader, our hero, our friend, our patriarch, a nation builder, a true statesman. We're still getting to terms. It is evident from the turnout of personalities, this is the death of no ordinary person. He was the man who kept the political arena on fire in the 90s era of the advent of opposition in Cameroon, by doing so, the pace setter marked generations and won respect from many. I've been around him for 33 years, and the person I am today, he molded me into this. All day long, big weeks of the Social Democratic Front SDF party kept watch at his residence. The party needs direction faced with such ultimate loss. I never expected it. A strong leader with principles, trying to build a great party, trying to build a great nation. As the day grew older, prominent political figures kept pouring into the residence of this three times presidential candidate, a man who never quit the political scene until death. The patriot, known by his famous caption, Power to the People, who did not even succumb to pressure from being kidnapped by secessionist fighters more than a year ago, lost the battle against prolonged illness, dying a month to his 82nd birthday. The departed SDF leader, John Fundy, played a key role in the rebirth of multi-party politics and to the advancement of democracy in Cameroon. More importantly, he was a patriot who showed love for country in his political decisions. Ebniza Akanga has a portrait of the deceased SDF chairman. Ni John Fundi was born on the 7th of July 1941 in Babatu, Santa Subdivision in Mezam Division of the Northwest Region. He attended the Bafuchu Basel Mission School and then proceeded to the Lagos City College in Nigeria, where he studied from 1952 to 1954. In 1966, Nijan Fundi returned to Cameroon and started business activities, which saw him open the famous Ibibi bookshop in those days. He was also president of PWD Football Club of Bamenda from 1979 to 1988 and president of the Bamenda branch of Lions Club from 1987 to 1988. In 1988, Nijan Fundi stood for parliamentary elections in one of the two lists of the CPDM in the Mezam Central constituency, but his list was beaten by that of Simon Achidiachu. On the 26th of May, 1990, Nijan Fundi launched his political party in Bamenda, the Social Democratic Front SDF, under very turbulent circumstances during which six persons died. In the first multi-party presidential election in Cameroon, organized in October 
Nijon Fundi came in second position with 36% after incumbent Paul Beer with 40%. He made other attempts but still could not win the presidency. In the first senatorial election organized in 2013, Nijon Fundi led the list of his party, the SDF, to the poll in the northwest region. But his list was defeated by that of the CPDM led by his longtime political rival, Simon Achidiachu. Ni John Fundi was a charismatic and grassroots politician. Not only did he pull huge crowds at his rallies, but he was also a good orator. Above all, he was a patriot. In the wake of the October 1992 presidential election won by incumbent Paul Beer, by which he also claimed victory, he refused the option of taking up arms, saying that he would not walk on the blood of Cameroonians to go to the Unity Palace. He also strongly condemned attempts to divide the country by ambassador secessionists. For that, he paid dearly as he was kidnapped twice by the ambassador terrorists and his property looted. And uh, here, here we have this uh, obituary that has been signed by the Honorable Joshua Osi, the first national vice president of the SDF, and it reads, It is with sadness that we announce the transition into eternal glory of the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front SDF, His Excellency Ni John Fundi, on June 12th at about 11.30 p.m. in Yaoundé from a prolonged illness. As we mourn our leader, we commit his soul to rest in the blossom of the Almighty Father. The funeral program shall be communicated as soon as it is established. And reactions describing John Fundy as a true patriot has been pouring in since the chairman of the Social Democratic Front Party died last night. The Deputy Secretary General of the CPDM, Gregoire Owona, says Fundy was Republican, while the UPC described described Balegel Court described Fundi as a, as one who loved his country. Mukwele Prince Will Aduma has a rundown of those reactions and declarations made by the national presidents of NUDP, Buba Belo Maigari and Isa Chiroma Bakari of the FSNC party in the following report. Notorious to some, popular to many, John Fundi is dead. And to the contended ruling CPDN party, the giant opposition political party figure of the 90s saved Cameroon's growing democracy in a country whose unity he held dearly. To Deputy Secretary General Gregoire Ona, the departed SDF chairman in all his strive towards winning power, believed in the force of argument and not the argument of force. Daring he was as knee trodded on grounds where no one had the audacity to bear the political cut. I have never seen him running away because the battle was tough, no matter how tough. Frondi is always there, uh, strengthening, encouraging uh, his comrade to continue the fight. And to the Secretary General of the UPC, Pierre Balege Nkot, John Frundi's 33 years of politicking was a phase of modern Cameroon's history of multipartism, whose page he wrote in the interest of the general good, John Frundi. The name of John Frundi became a brand in our country. And the SDF, his political party, also was known as a great party. And I can say today that uh, it's a great loss. He was the, our common denominator. If someone is somewhere, a meeting is summoned, first of all, we have to make sure that the leader, uh, who is uh, Nijon Frondi, was the author or has, uh, has adhered to the idea. To his contemporaries, John Frundi's exit leaves a hole in the country's political space, filling it will require the uprightness of the unwavering patriot in the fallen chairman.
family members, friends, loved ones and sympathizers of the SDF in the Northwest region are in tears since the confirmation of the party leader's near John Fundy's demise. Many have been rushing to his Tarikon residence with several memories of him standing up for the people and advocating for major reforms in the country are reminiscent in their willings. The atmosphere at Fundy's residence with Messi Kusi. This is one of the rare days where a crowd gathers at John Frunzi's residence in Tarikumbamenda without him around. Several adjectives have been used by Cameroonians across the board to describe the opposition leader and embody the void his death will cause in the political landscape of the country. But in his hometown, Bamenda, northwest region, where he is affectionately called Nijan, the pain is indescribable. The gates to his Tarikun residence are wide open. Mourners who come in release a loud cry and throw their hands in the air. In the early days of the SDF, Nijan Frunze received enormous support from a group of old women known as Takumbeng and the Vanguard, some of whom have been seen at his residence once more demonstrating their loyalty. Unfortunately, this time he is not around to crack his usual jokes or strategize with them. The green and white colors of the Social Democratic Front fly at half mass in his courtyard. The demise of the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front has been described by politicians and observers of national events as a huge loss for Cameroon. Beyond his party circles, many described the deceased chairman as a builder of national concord. Details in the following joint report by Eric Langmia Ufo in Bamenda, Kelvin Nembo in Bafusam, and Sylvester Atemkeng in Marwa. They all received the news of the demise of Chairman Nijan Fondi with shock and dismay. The policies of the SDF also brought ideas from uh, Dio's running elections to a new, to computerization of elections to where we are now with the LECAM. The chairman uh, represents uh, the father of democracy in Cameroon. Frundi's part in this whole game was so interesting. He launched the SDF despite all the odds in Bamenda here in Tarankon. Me, John Frundi, was regarded here as a sports promoter and a business magnet also had a good sense of humor. Me, John Fundy, was first and foremost a, a, a patriot. I say this with all humility, because if not of his love for, for Cameroon, 1992 would have plunged Cameroon into a, a destructive civil war. There were forces which wanted him to insist on quote unquote his victory. That the love he had for, for the, the country, he eventually said no. It is not a situation of either I, I win or nothing else. Bavu Samwan Mayor Sirinyang says John Frenzy was a responsible politician at the service of the people. One of John Frenzy's closest friends, 98-year-old Elhach Bala says the man who laid the foundation of multi-partism in Cameroon in the 1990s was down to it and easily welcomed all constructive ideas that could help Cameroon move forward. A civil society representative, Pierre Alaka Alaka, remembers Ni John Frundi as one who fast tracked multi party politics in Cameroon and succeeded to make his party the main opposition party in Cameroon. The national president of the alliance, the false progressist Sam Baka, will remember Ni John Frundi as a courageous and brave man who thread where others could not. The death of the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nijon Frundi, came just some few hours to the SDF elective regional conference for the Adamawa region. 
The outgoing SDF party officials for the region reiterated the need for the conference to hold, symbolizing the resilience of their fallen party chairman over the years at the helm of the party as he fought for democracy in Cameroon. I remember that uh, this man is a builder. He's a father of democracy. He's Moses that worked all his life but cannot be inside the palace. This is a sad situation for the SDF family, but also for the entire nation of our country, Cameroon. He could easily have the courage to say what everybody was afraid to say. It took 20 years after the creation of the SDF party for its emblematic leader, Nijan Fundi, to meet face to face with his political rival, President Paul Bia. The meeting was one of the high points of President Bia's visit to the Northwest region to preside over the 50th anniversary of Cameroon's Defense and Security Forces in December 2010. Nijan Fundi, typical of his convictions, made the following declaration after meeting with his political rival, Paul Bia. My own Secretary General, may he rest in peace, held a press conference and told Cameroonians that, look, I'm telling you, drum his chest, I'm telling you, I'm an insider. Frundi is whining and dining with Mr. Bia. I say, as you said that about me, luckily for me, Mr. Bia came to Bamenda within that period. And we met. And the pictures are there for all Cameroonians to see that when we met, shook, had the first handshake, he said, Mr. Chairman, I am happy to meet you for the first time. La poignée de main est historique. It was a nice meeting where we agreed that the dialogue started, the stalemate is broken, and uh, uh, given the constraints of time, uh, we cannot discuss much, but that we've come together and the discussions will continue. What have you been hearing of? And the one you met today, because the first time you're meeting him on a one-to-one -one basis, officially at least, what, what, what is your impression of him? Well, maybe I could have asked him that question too. They see the fully that they painted. But I think that uh, um, we're all relaxed and uh, we discussed frankly uh, from the heart. And uh, he appreciated that. And, uh, but nonetheless, uh, he had to bring up the issues of Elekam with him. And we'll be looking into that later. And his legacy lives on. In other news, the Prime Minister of Government, Joseph John Gute, earlier this afternoon granted an audience to the new Qatari ambassador to Cameroon with residents in Abuja. Ali Ghanem and Joseph John Gute exchanged the state of diplomatic relations between Doha and Yaoundé and equally explore avenues of boosting the ties. Star Building correspondent Christian Che Atam with the highlights. The Qatari ambassador to Cameroon, received by the Prime Minister Head of Government, Joseph Diangute, is representing his country as full-fledged ambassador for the first time. Prior to his arrival in Cameroon, Ambassador Ali Ghanem Ali Al-Fayed Al-Hajri served as his country's consul in London, in Madrid, and as consul general in Guangzhou, China. The officials saluted the diplomatic relations existing between Cameroon and Qatar since 1975 which relations have united the two nations in commercial exchanges, the fight against tax fraud, and the reciprocal promotion and protection of investments. The Prime Minister of Government, Joseph Diangute, conveyed the gratitude of the Cameroonian people to the administration of Qatar for supporting Cameroon's efforts against COVID-19 during the peak of the pandemic and for contributing in the construction of the Songlulu Dam and the Douala Yaoundé Stretch. Both agreed on the need for Cameroon and Qatar to continue exploring ways of upgrading and intensifying relations established since 1975. The first session of the structured political dialogue between Cameroon and the, the European Union for this year has continued in Yaoundé with both parties negotiating development deals. It is jointly uh, supervised by the Minister of External Relations. Lejeune Belambela and the head of the European Union delegation to Cameroon, Philippe Van Damme. Charles Ebune has updates on issues so far discussed at the meeting. One by one, Cameroonian and European Union diplomats charred in small groups in yet another edition of the structured political dialogue between Cameroon 
and the European Union taking place within a well-defined context. There is also the decision of the World Health Organization, which in any way declare the end of COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern. Top on the agenda are security, climate change, governance, and energy crisis issues. The energy transition is crucial in this perspective, and as we know, Cameroon is particularly well placed to take advantage of this green transition. The structured political dialogue between Cameroon and the European Union is jointly chaired by External Relations Minister Belambela and the European Union delegation head to Cameroon. The newly accredited European Union member countries ambassadors to Cameroon to President Paul Beer in the likes of the Spanish and French ambassadors attend the quarterly event for the very first time. Reduce stress, improve emotional well-being, provide a sense of belonging and reduce isolation. All of these are the surprising benefits of blood donation, which many Cameroonians are unaware of. As the Chantabia Foundation, the National Blood Transfusion Service and the Blood Donor Association step up calls for increase ahead of World Blood Donor Day tomorrow. Ayim Bile represents the advantages that come along with, serving, with saving lives by donating blood in the following report. Please, I beg on you guys to also come and donate blood in order to save lives. I've come to save lives today. Actually, my niece is sick, so I've come to donate. It can be you tomorrow. Let's try to save lives. Calls like this one from Franklin, a 21-year-old blood donor, are being multiplied in the face of rising demands for blood. What we need more is not just blood donors, but regular, benevolent, non-remunerated blood donors. Unknown to many, the blood donation process to save lives also comes along with plenty of advantages for the benefactors. Free health screenings. After giving blood, they will have to know that the hospital cannot forget what it has done. First of all, when you come and give the first time, you have all your four tests to do, HIV, hepatitis B, C, and syphilis. Reduce cost for medical services. When you are hospitalized, we can reduce your cost. As well as improved mental health for priceless services rendered. Please, giving blood saves lives. You can save with just a blood donation. You can save four, five neonates. You can save two children. And when saving them, uh, you make your life better. A process. Nonetheless, fraught with operational challenges including staff availability, the absence of modern blood banks as well as socio-cultural barriers, which today are the concerns of the National Blood Transfusion Service, set to become the most authoritative voice in Cameroon in blood donation matters. This year's International Cycling Tour of Cameroon has ended with cyclists representing the country staging a very poor show. The dismal performance confirms that cyclists lack up-to-date equipment, including latest bicycles, to boost individual and collective abilities to bring home victories. As Romeo Kenny reports, the Cyclist Federation that is supposed to make cyclists comfortable is crying for help from the government to acquire modern equipment. On fingertips, local cycling competitions are counted in the country. We organize a couple of races at the local level a year, beginning with the Grand Prix Chantal Bia. Then we have two or three races a month in the towns of Yaoundé, Mbalmayo and Sang Melima. The Cameroon International Cycling Tour and the Grand Prix Chantal Bia have for years remained major cycling events. Cameroon can boost of organizing. At the regional leagues level, we look at the calendar. There are some that you bring up we will not validate, and then some we will validate, considering the frequency because you cannot have a race today, and then you have another race tomorrow. At least for three decades now, Cameroonian cyclists haven't had up-to-date equipment. In 1985, Francois Jele, now age 82, played an indelible role in the purchase of new bicycles for cyclists. In the past, insurance companies created cycling clubs 
and they bought necessary bicycles. Appropriate. The national theme for cycling belongs to the government, so the government is, has to give us bicycles. 3 million, 4 million, the least bicycle is 3 million. Federation has on niveau. We sometimes receive bicycles from European cyclists who come here for competitions. That is how we manage to have bicycles for the national team. The competitions are few and the ones prolific cyclists are aging. Yet, government's aid to the cyclists and the federation at large is highly needed if good results should be produced. The Cameroonian cyclists on whom the country has always counted on during competitions include Clovis Kamzon Abosolo and Michael Boris Chenche. But the cycling permit them to live comfortable lives in order to prepare for competitions in serenity. Gilbert Ungene spent the day with the cyclists and now reports. The average Cameroonian cyclist can barely make ends meet from earnings gotten from the sports discipline. This is the case with the captain of the Cameroon national cycling team. It is not easy at all. I'm forced to sell shoes and rear dogs so as to be able to take care of the basic needs of my family. Welcome to my house. This is my house. All is not, however, bleak among cyclists in the country. Two-time winner of the International Cycling Tour of Cameroon, Clovis Kamzok Abesolo does not only earn a salary with the National Hydrocarbons Company, SNH, he also owns a welding workshop. Both cyclists, however, think much more needs to be done in order to enable them to be more competitive in national and international competitions. I am lucky to have a wife who knows what food to cook for me so that I can be strong and fit for any competition. This is not the case with most cyclists in Cameroon. Cameroonian cyclists badly need to be provided with the necessary facilities and means which will push them to rise up to the challenge of beating Maghrebian and European cyclists who happen to have far more better training conditions and facilities at their disposal. The mobile telephone company Orange Cameroon is forging ahead with quality service delivery to satisfy its growing number of customers. Among the projects Orange Cameroon envisages in the nearest future is to construct and equip or at the Nomayos data center on the outskirts of Yaoundé. Elizabeth Bombone Agbo reports that Orange Cameroon made known its plan during a meeting with the telecommunication regulatory agency. Satisfying its clientele is of utmost importance to the mobile telephone company Orange Cameroon as 95% of the population is connected to the 4G network. Orange Cameroon equally envisages to step up access to the internet from 50 gigabyte per second to 60 gigabyte before the end of this year. But that is not all. Orange Cameroon is investing some 30 billion CFV francs for the implantation of a high performance data center in Nomayos in the outskirts of Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. The Nomayos data center which we presented today, which we shared with the regulator, is uh, really implanted in our strategy to further expand our network in terms of uh, the increasing demands of our consumers. So in terms of space requirements, in terms of connectivity requirements, we intend to build this data center, top class standard, to satisfy our customer needs. Presenting the potential of the high connectivity project to the officials of the Telecommunications Regulatory Agency, the data center will see the light of day come 2025. We already acquired the land uh, in Nomayos. We are going through administrative procedures. We intend to start mounting the various modules of the data center sometime next year, 2024, to ensure that uh, latest 2025 we are alive. Loading the input of Orange Cameroon, the representative of the general manager of the Telecommunications Regulatory Agency, ART, urged them to forge ahead. Quality service delivery is one of our major preoccupations lately. We recommend that Orange Cameroon operator should continue putting in efforts in a bid to improve on its services so that the final consumer will be satisfied. So are satisfied. With the resilience of its technical system, Orange Cameroon stands tall in quality service delivery. 
Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this year we draw the curtains on this edition of the 730 News. And thanks for watching. You've been the company of Adele Mbala at 8.30 for Luvanto Camp. I'll be back same time tomorrow, God willing. Until then, it's bye from all of us on the 730 Bye-bye.